Gold mining has existed for hundreds of years in Kenya, largely concentrated in western regions of Nyanza and Rift Valley provinces. Many gold-rich areas remain largely underexplored and are dominated by artisanal and small-scale gold miners. The majority of which were located in Magori County on the banks of Lake Victoria. According to the Ministry of Petroleum and Mining, the gold production capacity of Magori alone stands at 34 tons per year that could earn an estimated 67 billion Kenya shillings or 670 million US dollars annually. National statistics estimate the artisanal and small-scale gold mining, or ASGM, sector provides direct employment for 40,000 Kenyan citizens, yet the indirect economic spillover effects remain uncertain due to limited information and are likely underestimated. In Migori, the ASGM sector provides an essential livelihood for women, men, and youth. At the local level, gold mining represents the single most important source of income in areas where economic alternatives are critically limited. On average, miners earn between three to five US dollars or 300 to 500 Kenya shillings per day, far exceeding incomes from agriculture, fishing, and forestry. In many rural villages, ASGM provides wage creation opportunities for miners and their families, driving thriving secondary economies for local entrepreneurs and business owners. <laughs> Due to the widespread informality of the ASGM sector in Kenya, miners often lack access to basic social, environmental, and legal safeguards. In many cases, artisanal gold miners are risking their lives to provide for the basic needs of their children, extended relatives, and in certain circumstances, especially in rural parts of Migori, are supporting adopted local orphans. At any scale, gold mining is a risky activity from an economic and environmental standpoint. The women, men, and youth engaged in artisanal gold mining in Migori are exposed to various forms of risk, which pose direct threats to their health and the local environment. Major risks include occupational health and safety hazards in underground mines, poor ventilation, and pit collapse, which in extreme cases results in loss of human life. exposure to dust and intense noise, increased rates of malaria due to standing pools of water, chronic exposure to toxic chemicals, most seriously mercury and cyanide, pose severe health risks to local and regional communities, especially when chemicals enter surface and groundwater. 
Mercury is a potent neurotoxin that not only endangers human health, but can bioaccumulate to harmful levels in wildlife, especially fish in river and lake ecosystems. Mercury is readily available, but an inefficient way to recover gold from its whole or concentrated ores. Miners often lose the majority of gold to their tailings during mercury amalgamation. In Megori, it's estimated that for every one kilogram of gold processed, 1.5 kilograms of mercury is lost to the environment, 40% of which is lost during the amalgamation process and 60% which is emitted to the atmosphere during heating on cooking stoves. Due to its persistence in the environment and significant health risks, mercury has become a pollutant of global concern. The Minamata Convention on Mercury is an international treaty to protect human health and the global environment from the adverse impacts of mercury. Kenya became a signatory to the Minamata Convention in 2013, which is the objective to reduce and where feasible eliminate mercury use from key industrial sectors. The world's largest source of mercury emissions comes from the ASGM sector, which accounts for at least 37% of total atmospheric emissions. Article 7 of the Convention targets ASGM directly and highlights worst practices or actions to eliminate. Worst practices and actions to eliminate include whole ore amalgamation, open burning of mercury amalgam or processed amalgam, burning of amalgam in residential areas, which is often near residential homes and schools, and cyanide leaching in sediment or, or tailings to which mercury has been added without first removing the mercury. In, in the tailings, there are even mercury because the tailings out there, they, they use mercury when, when, when they primarily source when they process the, the, the tailings before we take it to the site. So it contains mercury as well. At the same time, when we bring it here, we use uh, cyanide. At the local level in Migori, the use of mercury has decreased in recent years with improved processing techniques, shifting from whole ore amalgamation to the amalgamation of concentrates through improved Tanzanian ball mills and gravity concentration. In 2003, Tanzanian ball mill technology was introduced by the Migori County Artisanal Miners Cooperative Society to improve mining profits. Kenya's first ball mill was designed by a local fabricator near the central business district of Migori Town. 2003, I met Julius Popio, who we together developed the first ball mill. The prototype was a resounding success but faced significant barriers. The adoption of the ball mill was low due to suspicion of new technology, but gradually diffused throughout the broader community over the following decade. Today, there are estimated 3,000 ball mills in Nagori alone. Over 200 youth have benefited from training provided by the ball mill designer, who taught skills in order to professionalize the sector locally. Even some of the people who have been and who come from the universities who have been trained in this field of mining, when they come to the ground, they can find a completely different situation. In Africa, it is estimated 122 million young people will enter the labor force in the next decade. ASGM provides employment opportunities and represents an emerging economy in rural Kenya, but lacks access to specialized training for artisanal miners, especially in fields like mining engineering. All developed countries, I don't know whether there is any one country that has been as developed without engineering. Technical and Vocational Education and Training, or TVET, designed for interventions in Migori, must seek to educate artisanal miners of worst health and environmental risks, build their capacity to mitigate risks, and ultimately professionalize ASGM operations. Uh, there, there, there's some, there, some effort should be made. Organized training from institutions of learning that can, uh, that can be directed to these areas where we have need. 
So in the area of product design, I believe uh, if it could be strengthened, it can really be, it can really affect positively the, the development, the growth of a, of a county like this and even our country. In the last five years, however, cyanide use has increased drastically. Also, increasing risk locally due to the cyanidation of mercury-contaminated tailings. The lack of waste management facilities at the local level in Nagori and limited access to extension services or training that support the safe use of chemicals is a current major gap in many local interventions. As you can see, there is a big heap behind here. Uh, one of the risks that uh, we, we is troubling our mind is how to dump this waste after we have used it. It's a, it's a big waste, but we are still uh, uh, brainstorming how to uh, dump it or where to go dump it after, after the job is complete. Uh, and uh, managing the waste is another problem as well because uh, it could be washed, but you know it contains uh, chemicals in it. But when it is washed away by maybe the runoff or the rain, then uh, probably the, if it is not well managed, then the community would be at risk. The convention also includes important provisions to promote steps to facilitate formalization or regulation of the sector, and strategies to prevent the exposure of vulnerable populations, particularly children, women of childbearing age, and especially pregnant women, to exposure of mercury during ASGM processes. Due to the gender division of labor in Megori, women are primarily involved in the washing processing of ore, and mercury amalgamation of gold concentrates. This creates a disproportionate health burden, especially for women of childbearing age. Despite the critical and essential role of ASGM in the local economy, informal mining operations can severely impact the natural resource bases upon which rural communities depend, including water, air, and soil quality. In certain cases, artisanal miners are aware of these risks, but they choose to stay in the sector as it provides indispensable income for their families. Isoorima <laughs> Sani mai kamara uchel ka ati utishi mara yaro changa ni. Chandro kuma wabedo gordo siche mo yaro changa. Nisiche mo ke yare tongi gimi ya gordo. Kundi siche mo kobe yare tini aloyolo. Kaso siche mo tio no. Nti kumo tio kuma chalo akakuero katama na saru. Kumo tio gordo gibe toti gijai njwa kundo kumo tio gordo ekodi kigo eki. To nti siche mo kawati yene. Wacha ake maten tin kai ni gimalo to nti kumo dio chio po ma koro di di maten koro to tene oja e nyo waka nyo ni kecho nyo alo si e nyo re ma o o e nyo waka nyo nyo de mangeng o sebe do ga koko nyo si che ma tio ma yo de to e e ne gima ko nyo ra go de e ge mana ka chel ko de nyo tendo ma no go do ma ko nyo ra ko de yo ri chie mo to gi yo ri school be na chulo ne gi go do I use it. Like now, I've invested in agriculture. It gives me money that I pump in agriculture. Again, uh, it also, like the food I eat, the clothes I put on like now, they're all from that point.
Globally, Sub-Saharan Africa accounts for half of the world's out-of-school children. You have three hundred times one milliliter you get. What do you get? You get three hundred milliliters. And lags behind in many important areas of education, hindering socioeconomic development at the local level. The negative effects of mining in this area is that most of the pupils are orphaned because their parents are just working there, but they lack skills. Yeah, they are not. They were not educated on how to uh, undergo the process of mining, so they are just going there. Uh, when the whole of the pits collapse, then a number of parents have passed away. In Migori County, the contribution of ASGM to the education sector has been recognized. The gold mining sector contributes substantially to education through infrastructure development of schools, and miners use the proceeds from artisanal mining to finance the education of their children. Mining has contributed positively in that uh, it has led to construction of new classrooms and new facilities in the school. Secondly, it has empowered the parents and this has improved the living standards of the parents and this has enabled the learners or the parents to pay the school levies that are required of the school fees. Pesa masibu tika yule da abu wa sifu kundi kwa nyetenda. Kechi nitire nyetenda adeksa anima dunga kwana. Achiel, asipu kundi muti yiku kuleji. Mara reyo, asipu kundi muti yiku form 4. Bina dua di university sana. Mara dek besa ni form 3. Bina genu niko, di mabeto gilo di university. Kuru mago, aneno kagin, berma sana nukumda abu. It has also enabled the parents to provide for the basic needs of the children. The rise in local income due to the widespread adoption of ASGM inside of the last decade has resulted in higher rates of school enrollment in pre-primary, which currently stands at approximately 90%. Although the completion rate of primary school is lower at 70%, and the transition to the secondary level is estimated at only 52%. Some students manage to pay their own fee from this very activity. The attraction of quick money plus high levels of poverty pulls a number of children out of school, thus affecting their skills, knowledge development, and future job opportunities. Many youth are lured into early marriages due to free-flowing cash provided by the local gold economy, placing girls at a particular risk. In the cases of gold mining as negative, influence on our students generally. Um, girls are more affected than the boys. The reason why I say that, we've had cases of even pregnancies, cases of school dropouts, and when you try to follow them, then we, we get the, the, the routing from this, this very activity of gold mining. We've had cases where a few of them uh, go during school days and we've had problems with such students. So when I get to inquire from them, and the report they normally give is that they're able to raise that money on their own. And when I, I, I ask further, they, they try to explain how they manage to, go, to get the money. They physically go to this, this mining activity and raise the money and they're able to pay their own fee. We'll find that a majority of the laborers in the sector are youth and many of them are those who did not complete secondary education. So in one way or another, the mining sector is affecting youth education, and you'll find that uh, a lot of youth drop out because they want to work in the sector. Uh, secondly, there are other social ills which are associated with uh, quick money, and uh, mining being one of uh, the, the sources, you'll find that uh, there'll be early marriages because uh, uh, majority of young ladies will be attracted and uh, they'll be coerced towards getting marriages. We also have uh, uh, early pregnancies whereby young girls will give birth because of the 
associated, associated activities of mining. We also have issues of uh, uh, drug abuse because majority of the youth, they get the money, they, do, they can't invest the money and they use it uh, in other drug uh, related activities. We also have uh, issues of uh, HIV and AIDS. Migori is one of the Nyanza counties which has high rates of HIV and AIDS. And uh, this uh, affects fish industry and my, mostly mining industry. Both the government and artisanal gold miners need to develop strategies to address these seemingly high dropout rates and create skilled employment opportunities for women, men and youth in the ASGM sector. In Migori it is known for gold mining for that long. Why could they come with a, a college kind of where artisanal miners can be trained? Maybe today if you did some kind of training, you go all the way to Canada. How can people in Canada train artisanal miners and they are not actually doing it? And in the very place where we are doing artisanal mining, the government does not care. They cannot come with such colleges to train our youths so that they see it as a, 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 as a job that they, they, they can love, something they have learned from college and they have a, a certificate to show that they are training that particular thing. It will change even the mindset of the, the youth, our youth. Makadebi ni siri kando mara kenya kanya lobi to mapjo mabe. To ginya loma na puunju wa ginya loma na medo elemisa wa. Mondo wa be digi gik mwanya lu kunyo go mok nyal inyonge mawa. The colony go more Congo kill awareness. O Punjiji. Cosi Punjiji. Say the call be doing in his G. Gimonego detain Mondo Miguel license. Nikiti Cabano se be doing a Cabano de Timorana. You'll be the full of my man your license. To Cabano Kia to marry you in the Calo de Gay or Guinea no Chacorek and a GT among license. Coromeo, someone get you can realize is maybe you do harassment, maybe be harassed. Kalo wadegi police, iji mu pogoro pogori. Manan chuno ni kagena no kate police to ni kagereengi. There's the element of uh, uh, licensing by the government because it's an economic activity that involves land use and uh, the use of natural resources. Somehow the government has got to come in with a policy to ensure that uh, there is an element of licensing of the economic activity. Miners fear that if they get uh, legalized, maybe the government is going to tax them, uh, get royalties from them. And this is um, uh, a challenge uh, because uh, uh, the miners uh, don't understand why they need to get formalized. In 2016, the government of Kenya repealed the Colonial Era Mining Act of 1940, which had been in existence for 76 years. There are several types of mineral rights that may be granted for three categories of operations under the new mining law. Large scale, small scale, and artisanal mining. With the exception of artisanal mining operations, all mineral rights are granted by the cabinet secretary responsible for mining on the advice of the Mineral Rights Board. License applications are completed online and one has to register to be able to access the mineral cadaster portal. There are multiple requirements that must be addressed before the application can be submitted. The Mineral Rights Board meets every month to review license applications and the decisions of the board are communicated to applicants through the cadaster portal. This process is complex and beyond the comprehension of the majority of artisanal and small-scale miners who operate in rural areas. Uh, the online application process. Artisanal miners are people in the rural areas where even getting a network in the first place is a challenge. Most artisanal miners have even never seen a computer, leave alone operating that computer. So if they have to apply 
through the online process, I think that again is a challenge. To achieve formalization, government at national, county, and sub-county levels must provide access to information, engage ASGM stakeholders, and provide extension services that ensure ASGM can transition into a vibrant, safe, and formal economy that sustainably benefits the people of Magori. We also need uh, uh, government uh, officials that will come on the ground and see the situation as it is and see where they can train us and advise us. For example, we have a mining engineer currently, but he will never ever get into a pit. If you ask him to go down and instruct the seasonal miners on how they can dig their pits and construct it, he fears. He can never get in. So he speaks from outside, he does not know. They only respond when there is a, uh, there is a calamity kind of, like when six people died recently, everybody was there, the governor was there. So they wait until something happens and they just come to console miners but they do not uh, come up with uh, what can help prevent such calamities or, or from happening repeatedly. Uh, so they act after something has happened, something bad, but they do not take preventive measures. So the issue has been the, uh, having the, the, the issue of uh, the public not having access to the right information or the right kind of uh, exposure so that they may be able to know the right steps that they are supposed to pursue when it comes to pursuit of licenses. I'm a training coordinator because um, we realized that uh, there are so many things, so many gaps that the miners locally face, especially in terms of awareness, creation and skills uh, and things like that. So we saw into it that uh, as a component of training in uh, cooperatives would be so good. The Mining Act, of course, recognizes uh, artisanal miners. That is good news to us. But at the same time, it limits us because their description of artisanal miners is what we are far much above right now because we, we are not supposed to use this mechanized system of mining. We still need to use those crude uh, um, mining equipments. Which are, uh, can no longer work at, uh, at this moment. And they also say that uh, additional mining permit can only be issued for once and then renewed once and after that there is no more of that. You need to upgrade to small scale mining devices. And the process for getting a permit to realize for a small scale mining is not additional miners friend. So that is one challenge I've already noticed with that. I've also seen that the government is very slow because this act came into force in 2016 and today we are in 2018 and no permit has been issued so far. So I do not know when exactly they're going to begin to issue permits. So you know without permits we still look like we are illegal because we have got no documents to support the fact that we are mining legally. They are very slow. When artisanal is a term is, is factored in in the act, that is accommodative and the assumption is a common man is now factored in the act and they should look into it such that the industry becomes vibrant and uh, at least accommodative in terms of econo economic uh, development and even infrastructure development and skill. The process as it stands now, uh, requires a lot of time, it requires a lot of resources, it requires a lot of technical understanding, and uh, these are some of the challenges that the miners are facing. Artisanal and small-scale gold mining, ASGM, presents both challenges and opportunities. Miners need education, and encouragement to become part of the formal system and by extension address environmental impacts. Incentives can include technical and capacity building support, geological data information, 
training market-based approaches that allow access to or financing mechanisms, tax abatement, linking ecological and economic concerns. Mika is therefore calling for support from the government of Kenya and development partners to help address the challenges and unlock the sector's potential to spur socio-economic growth.